Hello, I'm Ronnie Eldridge. Welcome to Eldridge & Company. Many of the city universities' colleges work collaboratively with their neighborhood public schools. One is the City College Academy of the Arts, a public school grades 6 through 12 and connected to CCNY. That's where teacher Dennis Mikowski changed the usual English language arts class into the newsroom of a weekly newspaper. I love newspapers, and I love this story. So welcome, Dennis Mahowski. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> so tell me first about the school. Yes, so it's uh, City College Academy of the Arts. It's in Inwood, and we are an early college program. So a lot of the students starting in the ninth grade, they can uh, start going to City College and earning college credits. So some students graduate with like up to like 60 or 70. Isn't that incredible? It's amazing. And anybody in the district, it's, for, it's a district school. Yes. And then if you're from out of the district, maybe you can get into it. Be yes, assigned. there'll be, uh, there are a few that are from um, the Bronx. We have a couple from Brooklyn who just know of the, the school and they really want to be able to, the parents really want their kids to be able to go to the school to be able to earn these college credits. It's, I'm so admiring of parents who can navigate the system to find a school. Yeah, I... It's like a Baroque, I mean, it's mm -hmm. too much, right? Yeah, I don't... Uh, even as a teacher, I don't even know how, how it is. Yeah. It just seems a little complicated. Yeah, but these are kids who can earn 60 credits toward graduation. Yes. To a BA. Or yes. BA. And they don't have to take an entrance exam or anything. No. So it's amazing. Yeah, so there are some requirements in order to go to the um, college, but that really is the regents exam and whatever their score is for that. Mm -hmm. But most of them take the ELA regents, which is a 11th grade class and mm -hmm. they take it in the ninth grade even eighth grade and pass it so That's so amazing then they're able to go. now how many what's the student body like uh we have about 600 students mainly uh from the dominican republic uh and then we also have students um born in in new york uh and then also who are from various different areas we have some uh yemen uh immigrants we have uh immigrants from west africa um morocco uh, places like that. So, so amazing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah, it's really great. And these are kids who all speak different languages. What percentage do you think are really easy with English? A majority of them are. So I'm also the, um, the English as a new language teacher and coordinator. And uh, a lot of them actually uh, know English very well. So uh, even if they do come in and they need some support with it, mm -hmm. uh, I don't need to do a lot of... Uh, of the traditional um, mm -hmm. ESL strategies, but more just helping them with fluency, mm -hmm. writing. Uh, so it's so, and you teach more than the newspaper. Yes, I also teach um, an English language arts class, just like a traditional one, as traditional as I can get, uh -huh. uh, and then a, a speech and debate class as yeah. well. And is the is the journal is the paper a regular class or is it? an extracurricular activity? Yeah, currently uh, it is a um, regular class, which uh, I think is the best way to have something like this as a newspaper. Um, and last year when I started it, it was my principal that was the one that said, <laughs> this is going really well, this is now gonna be the newspaper So tell me class. what it's like. What gave you the idea? Uh, well, I really wanted to do a newspaper for my English class last year. And I read the news, I watch the news, I know everything as much as I can know about what's going on. And I saw a lot of my students don't. Even when I'd bring up like, does anybody know who Bernie Sanders is? They wouldn't know who that is. So then I was like, yeah. all right, I think we're gonna do this newspaper and uh, then they'll be able to be interacting with the news as opposed to just doing the traditional model of me teaching. But not every kid can take the class, right? No. And I wish every kid could, because yeah, yeah. uh, it's only my one class, so there's like 34 students in there every year. Um, but I do uh, give students the opportunity to uh, contribute to the newspaper if they want to, if they want to be a copy editor, if they want to. Last year, one, a, a student from the eighth grade uh, came and said, can I be the, the movie reviewer? Yeah. And I said, if that's what you want to do, we can do that. Yeah. And he he did about three reviews of, of so uh, it was it was fun to watch yeah so now you're not a base uh, a native New Yorker no I'm not I'm from California 
And did you have a school newspaper in high school? I did, and that was part of the reason why I wanted to bring a student newspaper to my school, uh, the school that I'm teaching at, because in high school, it was in Southern California, it was about 3,000 some students there, but the newspaper was so important to not only the student body, but to the community as a whole. So if like just to see my name in the newspaper or my friends writing for it or an article about something that we did, uh, it was, it really was eye-opening and inspiring to be able to see that. And the community also, they would contribute ads to the newspaper, uh, so we knew also stuff that was going on in the neighborhood. And I, saw, and I saw that there wasn't such a community or communication among everyone, because a lot of teachers are just in their rooms and students are going from class mm -hmm. to class. So I wanted to bring as much as I could from my high school newspaper to be able to provide that community. And the, a lot of the kids really don't know what's going on in the world, huh? It's so discouraging to hear. <laughs> yeah, they they just, well, like there's a, a, only about like f lower than 50% of youth even trust local news, uh, and 75% of them get it from social media. Did you say trust it? Yeah, trust local, new, local news. And what do they watch if they get it from television? Uh, I've talked to them, and it's New York One or uh, the local uh, Spanish channel wow. that they'll listen to. Uh -huh. But usually it's because their parents are watching it. Yeah. So they'll just like walk by and they hear it. I got it. Yeah. And is that, that's so discouraging, isn't it? Yeah, because uh, then there's also a majority of them get their news from social media or from right. you know, a celebrity that posts maybe a story or, or something right. like that. So they're not getting, they're never really getting the whole story of something. They're not getting um, just like the basics of what you should be knowing as an informed uh, citizen. Uh, so um, that's why I really wanted to uh, get this so that they can see the effort that's put into making a newspaper and then be able to start uh, reading the news and seeing. Um, and the, the principal encouraged your idea. He, they liked it. She yes, liked she, it. she loved the idea. Right. And, and it's encouraged you to go on to other schools. But before we get to that, is there ever a chance that it would be an extracurricular activity that a lot of kids would join? I think that it could be something where into the class, it could also be um, an extracurricular after school so more students can be involved. Uh, it's the same way that I have a speech and debate class and then I also have a debate team. So the speech and debate class is five days a week uh, during the school day and then I also have the debate team after school. So the kids will be going back and forth. So you're us. getting kids interested in the news more than one place? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because we, with the debate class, they have to debate. You know, I, I bring up the, the National uh, Association of Debate where they come up with these topics that are very relevant to what's going on. And so they need to do this research and find out. And it's really fun to watch them because... Yeah. And they debate each other. They don't travel. There isn't a debating thing in the... There's a debate um, league, but within my school, we just do it within the class. Yeah. And then they're, they're debating and getting very heated about these topics that I never yeah. thought they would have been heated about. Yeah. So tell me in the class, how do they become the staff of a newspaper? How do they form? Who's the editor? How does that happen? Is there an editorial board? Do you do editorials? Do you, you know, take investigative kind of stuff? What do you do? Yeah, so we first um, give them all the options that they have. Uh, I also say that they can add on to any of the positions if they don't see a position that they really like. Um, but I usually will tell them that, you know, there's the editor-in-chief, there's the associate editor, creative director, business manager, and then we have different sections within. So then the first uh, class, they got to choose the name which of the whole newspaper, which is the Claw Weekly. And then is each that section. How it came? Yeah. So I, I gave them, I was like, you know, you it's it's your newspaper now, what do you guys want to name it? Yeah. And they voted on that. Right. And then the different sections, the news section is the dose. Uh -huh. uh, the fashion section is the drip, because <laughs> all the, whenever it's like they talk about their fashion, and they, they talk named about it. their drip, yes. And the boys are in, as interested as the girls? Yes, and yeah, because, and then we have um, the chismosos, which is like the gossipy editorial type, and then the clutch. So, and that's the sports section. Uh, but it's interesting because girls, you know, 
you don't really, you know, their boys are wanting to be on the drip, they're wanting to be on that, so there's no... Um, it's not a sexist real element. No, they're all wanting to contribute to all of the yeah. different sections. Yeah, and what do you think it instills in these kids? Um, one, it instills just a sense of self-worth because they then see their name in the newspaper when it's published. Uh, it also gives them the professional skills when they leave high school, when they leave college, of how hierarchy works. Uh, it also just gives them a sense of proactive uh, behavior. So I tell them that they have a deadline, and if they don't meet the deadline, it's not going to be in the newspaper, but I'm still going to give you a grade. And they don't care about the grade. They care about seeing their, their uh, story in the newspaper. So um, it's really great to see that they, it's like grades, no, I'd rather just be in the newspaper. And, and they, do they edit it or do you edit it? They edit it. So they have to go through a whole process of, they have to pitch their idea to their editor, the editor pitches it to the editor in chief, they give approval, and then it goes from we there. We hear so much about the inability of high school graduates to write anything. Yes. What happens there? I think that it's um, a mix of things. I think that one, uh, the standards uh, have been um, very focused on just one form of writing, which is typically argumentative writing, um, but doesn't really give them other options of like creative writing and things like that. Because some students aren't going to be good argumentative writers, but maybe they're going to be really good, brilliant creative writers, and you know, with poetry and journalism as well. So. I think that's one, and then there's also the the testing aspect where there's so much testing, uh, and it's bubbling in. It's not uh, mm. doing a lot of the writing. So it's a relief for them to get to the newspaper. Yes, it gives them like a little more freedom, but they're all right. Tell them they are the. Some place I I read about you is that you encourage kind of the rebellion or how to handle authority. Yes. Okay. I I <laughs> encourage my kids to question anything. Yeah. Even question me. So like in the first couple weeks of school, I will usually do things that they'll listen and they just like go about doing it. And then I'll tell them, why were you listening to me? And they'll just tell me, because you were the teacher. And I say, okay, well, just because I'm the teacher, you should still question. It does come, you know, back at me at the end of the year when they're all questioning every little thing that I'm doing. <laughs> but then they start doing that in their, in their daily lives where they come and talk to me about, I don't agree with this policy. I don't agree with what's going on in my class. You know, can you help me with this? Uh, but I will encourage them to, um, you know, advocate for themselves. And then, if they are, if they do disagree with the policy, I say let's put it in the newspaper, and let's get some people. What do their parents have to say? Uh, their parents love it. Uh, a lot of the parents come in to parent-teacher conferences, either bring a copy or I'll give them a copy. Uh, and they're so excited and so proud to see their, their child's name uh, in the byline. So uh, the parents love it. And then it also gives the parents, you know, an idea of what's going on inside the school from a youth perspective. Does it also change the parent's perspective about authority? <laughs> I don't think so. Uh -huh. uh, there still is a sense of, um, uh, you know, respect authority. Uh, don't question it too much, um, but I think with the with uh, teenagers, they already have that sense of you know wanting to challenge everything. Mm -hmm. So hearing an authority figure saying question it, mm -hmm. they'll they'll go do it. Did you um, you graduate? You got a master's degree from City College. Yes, I did. Uh, in 2016 is when I graduated. And so did that propel you to this particular school? Uh, it actually. So I did the New York City Teaching Fellowship. Uh, and I was... Which is what? Uh, it is through the um, Department of Education to get um, people who do not originally want to become teachers. So it has a lot of career changers. Um, and so they have a much, um, you know, the age range is a, a little bit higher um, because uh, they're not really wanting people right from education school. What, what were you doing before? Uh, I was doing um, public relations before that. And I was... So ready to you, move out of that. You were communicating. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, I, and it gave me, the one thing is that it gave me uh, an ability for this, for this newspaper to tell them how it works mm -hmm. in, for businesses and the communication with these journalists and 
the relations that are the relation the relationships that are built. Uh, so even with those contacts, um, I would uh, I brought in um, Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer to speak to the the kids. I had a former reporter for the New York Post speak to them, uh, and then I also had an actor who was on Thirteen Reasons Why uh, yeah. come speak and talk about their relationship with the media and the importance of uh, media literacy and what they're doing. So you came from California. Did you, were you always interested in the kinds of things you're now interested in? Yes, I always was. Uh, I originally had come to New York because I really wanted to be um, something at the United Nations. Uh, I wanted to be like an interpreter. Uh, so I got involved right away. In, uh, I interned for. What, did you gonna, what were you going to interpret? What languages were French you? French and Italian was what I wanted to oh. do. But then I took my first French class in college and it was really difficult. And that's when I was like, <laughs> I think I need to switch over to something else. <laughs> that happened to me too. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't, we're reading literature right. now. I, right. This is a bit much. Right. But was your family interested in the community and in politics and stuff like that? Uh, my dad was always very interested in politics. So he was always you know, watching the news, keeping me up to date. And my mom was always very involved in uh, the community, mm -hmm. um, the schools that we went to. Um, so you have that advantage, which yeah. some of your kids don't have. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a very interesting kind of thing, isn't it? I always like to know where somebody comes from and what they're, you know, how yeah. they look at the world. Yeah. Because I think it does. So now you're embarked on a campaign, now yes. that you've seen what, how successful this newspaper is, right? Yeah. I went to um, the high school music and art before it mixed in to become LaGuardia. Oh, okay. And it was uh, a very rebellious school. <laughs> <laughs> it was a wonderful school, though. And we had a very active newspaper. It was called Overtone, which they, I think they may still oh, have. I love that. And the editor of that was a friend of mine, Max Frankel, and he then went to college where he became the editor of the Columbia Spectator. Oh, wow. And then eventually he became the editor of the New York Times. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it was really an experience that was incredible. Yeah. And I always found that the people who worked on that paper, there were other people like that too who followed him, and, and then the people who worked on the college newspaper, a lot went into that profession. Yes. Of course, in those days it was a totally different thing. News, that, yeah. Very exciting. <laughs> yes, yeah. So yeah. now we are. Um, the organization is called Students Disrupting, mm -hmm. and uh, we are embarking to uh, advocate and support student newspapers uh, in all New York City public. How schools. many schools have it? It's an unfortunate number. So out of the 1,800 uh, New York City public schools, only 200 uh, have that. And even um, I've spoken to outside organizations who say they think that that number is even lower now. Uh, so that's why when I saw that um, while I was doing my newspaper, that's when I thought, we have to be mm -hmm. bringing this to more schools. Did City College have a, does that have a newspaper? Uh, they do, yes. An active one? Yes. And do you know how many of the colleges in the university system have it? From what I can see, I think that there are a lot of colleges that do have them. Uh, even if it is just online, uh, they do have um, an active uh, newspaper. And then they have a very good graduate school now. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so it, it, it's one of those things where the colleges, I think, continue that tradition. Uh, something uh, has switched where now just it's not, it's not a big focus for schools to have student newspapers. So how do you have to go about it? Do you have to find a teacher who wants to do it? Yes. A principal who wants to do it? We'll probably need to have a, a, Are you a gonna organize collaborative approach. Yeah, <laughs> we'll have to have a collaborative approach with that. Yeah. Um, because at first, right now, we're sort of, we're in the phase of informing people of. Who's we? It's me and the um, <laughs> board of directors of my uh, uh, organization uh, who are trying to. Are there students on it? There are. No students on the board of directors, but there are students that are working on our blog blog that we have, which is called Students First Journal. So they are um, working with us on that as well. Uh, so we're just trying to inform people of the fact that there are not a lot of student newspapers, because a lot of people think just, I had one, mm -hmm. yearbooks still happen, mm -hmm. must be newspapers still happening. Mm -hmm. So right now it's just the fact of informing people 
that that's not the case. Mm -hmm. And the blog? The blog is uh, run by the students, uh, and they write about... From your um, school? From the, a lot of them are former students of mine. So they go to, um, they're in college now. One is like at um, NYU, another's at Howard University. Uh, so I'm having them just whatever they want to write about, it's from their perspective. Um, and a lot of them have different ideas. Some of them like talking about New York City transportation. Others like talking about uh, how she came from a school that was mainly Dominican, and then she went to Howard University, and she really interesting really uh, learned a lot about how she was she's not Dominican, and she's yes. and right. she's now very much uh, confident. In so her. interesting, yeah. yeah. So. The outreach, I'm interested in that. Are you getting help from the Board of Ed, the Department of Education? Uh, right now we're, good. we're doing it uh, grassroots style. So it'll be through finding those teachers in schools who uh, want to be able to do a student newspaper. Can you do that through the UFT? Uh, the UFT uh, is definitely um, supportive of, of what we're doing. Um, but we are going to be um, going through um, just any contacts that I have or friends that know friends that work at uh, different schools and be able to pick out like you know a couple in each borough because I want to ensure that every borough is is represented and especially the areas of those boroughs that are underrepresented. How do the kids let's go back to the paper? How is the editor chosen? That is then uh, they uh, they apply for the position on a on a uh, actual job application. They give us a few ideas of what they would do, and then we interview them. Me and my co-teacher uh, were the publishers of the, the newspaper, and so we're the boss, and so we f hold a formal interview where we you know, shake hands, we talk to them about you know, what their job is going to entail, what are they going to bring to the paper. Uh, and then usually, you know, this, this, this year, um, just last week, uh, the students um, did uh, have like five uh, that were really wanting to be mm. the head of the newspaper. Mm. So that'll be a difficult one to mm. choose because they're all, they're all great. They're all uh, natural leaders. That's it's so just going to be who will be proactive. Yeah, and that's such a great training, too, or development and opportunity. Yes, like in the middle of our interviews, we will remind them, like, yeah. this is what you're going to have to do in a real interview. Yeah. Like, don't get down on yourself if you, you don't know the answer. Right. Try to talk about something else or, mm -hmm. you know, or say you don't know the answer to that or things like that. So the main goal with, with the newspaper from the very start to the publishing is, and distributing is to give them uh, the skills that will carry on after school. It's, it's an incredible kind of program, isn't it? Yeah, I love it. I love to see it. Yeah. Do you, um, are you ever going to, always going to be a teacher? Uh, I will always <laughs> be in education as much as I can. Uh, especially, um, you know, it's my fourth year as a teacher. It's now just gone to the point where it's not even work for me. I enjoy it. I go to work, work and I'm excited to go, uh, and I'll usually be staying What after. percentage of, of the students go on to college? At my school, we have a, like, a, like 99 percent that go. Uh, we have a guidance counselor who I always say is like the fairy godmother because she goes to them and finds out what they're good at, and then she finds the school that's right for them. That's so. an amazing record, isn't yes. it? Yes, it's, yeah, it's right. incredible. And they're all curious. <laughs> they're all curious, yes. They all, they, they all know what college they want to go to. Uh, they all um, are already emailing me now about volunteering for me and staying on the newspaper and, mm. and things like that. So, so let's go back to the, the website of your organization. It's called... What? Disrupting? Student, uh, studentsdisrupting.org. That's very encouraging, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> yes. And, the, you, and that's online. Yes. But the newspaper is a real newspaper? Is a real, is a paper newspaper. And it's also online? Uh, we are not online right now. Our goal is to be able to bring uh, maybe it online. It's better not to put it online. It makes them read it. <laughs> yes. I mean, and, and the one thing that I've seen is that it's interesting that a lot of people say, you know, wouldn't the youth be more interested in online news, but it's been the opposite where the kids, like distribution day, publication day, because you see is so your name, exciting. It's there in print. Yes. Isn't that a, yeah. And a lot of, it's so fun for me the day when the kids are passing it out, and then later on in the day I see like a group of students sitting and reading the newspaper and pointing at their friend so in great. it. Yeah. yeah. 
it's wonderful to talk to you because of your enthusiasm and oh, thank you. and and your creativity. I mean, it's terrific. Yeah, thank you should you. be the number one teacher. Oh well, I would, <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> okay, and we hope that some of our viewers will contact you. Hopefully, there are teachers in schools in the city that don't have a newspaper, right? Yeah, so we do actually have a fundraiser uh, on um, Thursday, September 26th uh, at the Seaport Museum uh, Melville Galleries. Great. Uh, and we're really trying to um, just show the, that there's a lot of support out there, and, and Gail Brewer will be our oh, good. special guest. Good for you. Well, yeah. congratulations and much success to you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for coming.